we're going to move on. Um, thank you both very much for your Thank you. Uh, Leonard Korn. Thank you very much, Chairman, and all of you for uh, entertaining uh, this very important bill. I must confess that all of the objections that I have heard, uh, and by the way, I'm representing the Medical Society, uh, and let, let me uh, give some background. Uh, the Medical Society has been very interested in firearm safety. Uh, and over the last five and a half years has been uh, involved with passing policy positions. And our first policy position that we passed was on universal background checks. Now it's very interesting to me, and I hear this from people who are opposed to uh, extensions of the background check system to close some loopholes, that people always talk about uh, law-abiding citizens. This is not a bill to interfere with law-abiding <laughs> citizens owning guns. And this is not an anti-gun bill. The Medical Society is concerned <laughs> of... And the Criminal Justice Committee and Public Safety Committee, we're respectful of everyone and we want to listen to their testimony and we would simply ask that their people be respectful also. And please, we don't, we don't clap, we don't cheer, we don't boo. Thank you very much for that. For so, uh, this bill is aimed for preventing people who are not law-abiding citizens from purchasing a firearm. If a person is a law-abiding citizen, this bill does not interfere with their ability to buy a gun. But there are many loopholes, and I appreciate that the pro-gun people feel that there are no loopholes at all, but that is not the case. It's wrong. It's fake news. All over the country, medical societies are concerned about gun violence. And why? Because we take care of the people who are the victims of gun violence. They end up in our emergency rooms, in our surgical suites, in our psychiatric offices if they survive, or mental health professionals. So we are the last lane of this business. And last year, as, as probably all of you know, there were close to 40,000 deaths by firearms in this country last year. Now compared to uh, Great Britain, 25 times less the rate of gun violence. This bill is one of the pieces of legislation that is important to keep guns away from people who may not be law-abiding citizens. If there's no indication that they have uh, any law-abiding problems, they will pass a background check. Now, I've included in my written testimony uh, a number of studies that have uh, supported universal background checks because many states have passed significant gun safety laws. These are not restrictions. These are gun safety laws to reduce the incredible gun violence that we have in our country. And uh, so this is an important piece. And the reason that Kathy Rogers has introduced this legislation maybe four times is that three times it has been knocked down. But that doesn't make it wrong. Why is it that people continue to want to allow people who might be dangerous from purchasing a gun? Why is that? I don't know. 
I've included in the testimony, in the written testimony, the, uh, um, a letter uh, from 75 medical health and public health and research organizations regarding universal background checks, which this isn't quite, but it's a step in the right direction. Private sales are allowed in this particular bill, but 75 medical societies. Why are medical societies caring about this issue? Because we know that with proper gun laws, we can have a safer society. Thank you very much. Is that well? Yes. Uh, you mentioned 40,000 deaths by firearms. How many of those were suicides? Um, about, uh, there were uh, 14,000 plus homicides. And uh, I don't have the numbers, but you can uh, subtract uh, from 40,000. There were a little less than 40,000 last year uh, deaths uh, due to firearms. Seven children are killed every week in this country by unsecured firearms. Now, we don't have a bill relative to securing firearms in the home. Oh, okay, great. Well, given the fact that a large number of those homicides, the majority of them were suicides, doesn't it make sense to deal on the mental health of the folks as opposed to just denying uh, creating lost my train of thought here. But on this application, federal application for purchase of a firearm, on one of the pages it says question 17, qualifying gun show of event. And on this paper, it came from the Public Health Association closing loopholes for gun shows. It's already covered. Excuse me? It's the gun shows are already covered. Well, there are. Uh, I appreciate your comments, and uh, uh, I don't feel, from the information that I've had, that all uh, firearm purchases uh, go through a background check. But if they do, then this bill uh, won't affect them. I don't think that's the case. And through the country, medical organizations and others, and I have testimony that I'm going to uh, supply to the committee from the, uh, uh, from the president of the American Medical Association and also from one other uh, physician and oncologist. But I, I'll, I'll bring to your attention, I'll, I'll talk about it more when we talk about the waiting period. There was a situation in New Hampshire where a gun shop sold weapons to three different individuals, and those individuals suicide within a very short time. So in New Hampshire, they have established a gun shop uh, project to, yeah, and, uh, and that's great. So there, uh, for those gun shops that have associated with that, there are uh, brochures and so on, and education for the gun shop owners to try to see whether people who are buying a gun have the intention of harming themselves. I, I just want to say I want to make the, I'll make the observation that there are two firearms bills that we're going to be discussing right. this afternoon. You spoke to that. I give a little bit of leeway on that to make yes. commentary. But I would request everyone to focus in on the bill on which they have to right, Thank you for your Thank you for your testimony. Rock TV.